Earlier this year, I went to a professor on campus who I thought had some interesting research. I saw something to do with, with microgravity, something to do with uh, combustion of fuels in, in like space-related environments. So I went to him and I asked, could I possibly use your type of research and kind of work it in my own way to form like a university team and enter this program called the NASA Microgravity University Program. And he mentioned they haven't done biofuels yet. So I said, great, let's just try to run a biofuel experiment with what you've done so far. And then I formed this project team and we were accepted. So the experiment is essentially to take two syringes and what we'll do is move these syringes toward a uh, what we call a cross fiber just two straight fibers um, that cross each other at a point and what this allows us to do is to uh, eject a droplet onto these fibers and the droplet will remain constant will remain in one position at the very most basic level of our experiment we need to ignite a droplet of biofuel in a sphere instead of in a teardrop. And so a teardrop happens on Earth with gravity because when the combustion gases leave the droplet, they are less dense. And so with gravity, the less dense air floats up. And so with no gravity, we have a perfect sphere of the expanding uh, droplet. And so with that, we hold it in one spot and get a very accurate expansion measurement. When the plane starts to hit this parabolic arc, like in a roller coaster where you start to float upward and you, you just feel that free fall, um, the droplet will remain constant at the center of these two fibers. Um, and then we can go in and we can ignite it. And then in microgravity, we get this, this perfect sphere basically for the droplet and we can get good uh, visual data using two cameras. It's good for getting burning rates of these fuels. It's actually kind of uh, odd because we don't really have any means of, of pre preparing or simulating the microgravity environment before we start. So all we can do is some basic ground tests to work in microgravity, but we can't actually run those tests. So we just need to try to get it to work and we need to make sure that every time the syringes move in, we need to make sure that the igniter works every time. And then the first real microgravity ground test will be the first time we enter the gravel on a plane. The biggest challenge has been trying to solve the triple containment, trying to get that to work in combination with all of the things that we already have. Uh, all of these boxes are made out of big polycarbonate sheets. On top of that, as you can kind of see underneath in here, this is aluminum 8020 frame and it's the primary load bearing structure inside here. For us, that was the most uh, strenuous requirement we had to meet from NASA is that we had to be able to take uh, several maximum G loadings. My big concern is the ignition system, which prototype is right here. The droplet will be suspended on this wire right here, and we also came up with a new idea of just using uh, a spark, just like on a regular barbecue, for the reason that propane, gas propane lights at 900 degrees Fahrenheit, so whatever ignites a barbecue, we should be able to use on, on these fuels, because these fuels only take about 700 to 750 degrees Fahrenheit. So we only have 30 seconds of microgravity, and being able to move all of our parts, ignite the droplet, let it fully expand and ignite, and then um, use up all of the fuel, that, that's hard to do in 30 seconds. Once we get the results, uh, we have the potential to uh, come up with, it's basically a model of the burning rate of the fuel. What that allows you to do is to go into, say, a biofuel combustion engine, anything of that sort. And then you can potentially improve the efficiency. You can look at uh, improving how the fuel is burned. And then, for instance, because we know now how it's burning in microgravity, we can also use that data for, say, like a fire extinguisher on like the International Space Station to improve fire safety. There's a lot of other interesting things that could come from it, too. So, our stuff is research, but there are applications that can come from this research.